Well, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Just come down with my umbilical cord microphone and camera in hand because I've got three or four hours spare. 2.30, another early morning start for me. Um, down a regular day ticket water, it's called Vale Farm uh, Fishery. Been here before, done films. We're going to come down because a lot of fish you get here are caught it really, really close to the margins. But last time I was here with Mike, I noticed the better fish seem to be a little bit further out. I do wonder, is the angling activity on a day ticket commercial water, does it sort of push them out more than bigger fish? The bigger fish, I mean, let's call it seven pound plus on a commercial water. But anyway, I'm down here. I'm going to show you the uh, setup in a minute. Here is a tasty looking swim. I have to say, look, with the willows down there, a lot's been cut back here, so I don't know that would have disturbed the fish. I'll scatter some bread around here. See it just down through there. This would be a nice area if you're margin fishing, but I just see fish moving out there. And I do wonder if the bigger fish do get pushed out. It's sort of hard to say because if there's a lot of anger, I mean, I've come on this lake because the other lakes are rammed, but it's, it's probably going to be a bit tougher here, but I knew we're in one or two fish. Give it a go. And what I'm going to be using is this. Oh yes, I must show you this. You've got to take a look at this one. Now this people, if those of you have seen my previous chairs, which I've had 20 or 30 years, this is the new Pro Series by the Totally Awesome. We're going to be launching this one. This is the luxury one. I don't know which skip I got it out of if the wife got it from a charity shop. Look at this. This is the ultimate fishing chair people. It locks out like that. And then let me show you around here. You've got somewhere for your mobile phone, bottle of water, bits and bobs, bits of tackle, even bits of bait in there. Look, in there, I mean, no money in there. So that's good. I mean, why don't they make, make these things in England? This one is called a sun flare, just there, sun flare. Obviously American, I would suggest. Very, very light, so I like it. And wait for this bit, guys. Is that not pretty cool? because I can sit there, can of drink, can of beer, bait bucket, bait tray, anything like that. Better still, I can put my rod butts on there. I could be fishing a swim here, look like this. Lovely and light, I pick it up with one hand. It's all tough, canvas, brilliant, brilliant chair. Look, sit down, rod rest goes down here obviously, I don't have a rod rest tonight, today. That goes there. All I've got to do is drill here, or maybe I thought put, little strip of wood with little U's in it like that, so it rests on the half of the butt like that. Basically like this, sit back, relax, wham, straight away. I really like the idea of it. Of course, the down, downside of it is I'm gonna knock my cold beer off the, t off the side there. But just go into, you don't have to spend a fortune on a chair. I mean, that's really handy, isn't it? Camping shop material, honestly. I think that's a cracker. That's going to be my new fishing chair. Let's show you the tackle I'm using. On this, I've got my trusty Avon rod, five or six pound line, Avon reel. People want to know what size it is. It's called something perfection. Well, that must be me, obviously, perfection. Size 12 hook, straight through a self-cocking or self-writing float there. You can see that. And I've added a BB shot. I've got two little locking number eight on the side of it, and then I've got a BB shot there for a little bit extra. I want to pip it right down like that, because although I'm going to be trying to catch off the surface, I just have this feeling that a slow sinking piece of bread flake will be good here. I think some of these bigger fish are underneath the ones that are on the floaters. Now then, let's show you what else, one of the toys we got we can show you. Oh yeah, oh, I can I use my table? <laughs> Look at, look at my table, folks. Look, oh, I could put my bread on my table, can't I? How handy is this thing? Look, just go into the camping shops. I mean, in America, they've got good camping gear. Go into the camping shop and see what they supply. Those guys who do surface fishing or even flake fishing, I'm using this toasty bread. Very thick. It says naturally low in fat. I don't really care. It's thick. So just like this, one piece gives me a good piece of flake for fishing with. Here's another tip for when I actually get fishing. I bet nobody knows what these are. But there's a certain make of... I bet nobody knows where the ed edge of this is. These are sorted out from um, dog biscuit packet 
which is all mixed, and I've picked out these bigger ones, and just, they've been in here for like ages. I've used them before, I've caught fish on them, carp off the top. They're a nice big size, the small fish can't break them down, like with bread they can crumble it up. These things float like 80% out of the water, watch. Try and show you if I can, just in close. Look how much of that is out of the water. They stick up really well. And of course you can cut them in half as well. But they're like spongy, they're ridiculously good floaters. Look at that. That's without flavouring them or anything. Got some bread out there. I'm gonna be sc scoping this out up and down here. Casting my wagon float out when I see a fish move. At the moment, all is quiet on the western front. Well, there's some tips to get you going, but I do like these biscuits. You have gotta sort them out, obviously. Just something different to use instead of regular old chum mixers. With this thicker bread, generally I find one slice is enough to give you a good swamping of bread as it were. You want to break it all up. Don't waste that grain, that could be a carp. And I'm going to start throwing it out there, just like this. Quite like this lake, it's a bit quieter. Might be quiet because the fish aren't coming out, who knows. And I, what I do is I get about five or six, five, six, and I give them a little, a little gentle squeeze to throw them out so that when they spread, they spread in a little clump. As a fish moves on my biscuit down there, small fish taking it or trying to, and it can't. So there's nobody just fishing here. Over there, just beyond that, there, you might be able to see it, is a little brown biscuit. But you can see here is a piece of bread flake sinking slow. Now these floaters drift along like this, but that one's still sinking. So if they used to get fed in one area, as a fish moved out there. I've got to chuck some up under this tree. I quite fancy that scummy area there as well. So I'm trying to fish in areas that people won't fish like out there further. And maybe down there. I don't imagine too many people are going to cast down there. Oh, I just love it. Look at that chair, boy. Look at that chair. Pulling the float up, back by that leaf. Check your drag. Wind down to the float, barely moves, and they just stare at the float. I've also got the line across my finger here, so if I do have a tug, I'm not, you know, I'm looking away at something else, getting distracted. The float goes, I can at least feel it. Tug. Now I might have to go to free line to pick a fish off, but I want to try this um, float first. If not, I'm going to be using touch legend with slow sinking flake. It's fish moving out, two fish moving out there. I don't think they're big fish, but I'm gonna go out that way. Now that, I've moved the number eight shot about two feet from the hook. So it should be sinking at a decent rate. Oh, there goes the float straight up the tree. And back again, that was lucky. Striking too hard. Don't let your bread get in the sun, it dries out, try and keep it in a bit of shade. Decent fish. Now there's several bits of bread out there, and I'm gonna put mine somewhere in the middle of them, just so they feel confident. I think what I would do, move to this swim, just to the side, in between each other. This shields my body a bit. Oh, I'm on, I'm on guys. Just dip the float, slow sinking flake. I'm on. Well, not a big fish, not a big fish, but still one taken down there. I will take anything, it's just so nice. When a plan comes together, the rod's bent, the blue sky, the sun's on my back, what more could you ask? Well, bigger fish, I suppose, but let's not be greedy. He's going in the snags. I can't afford to lose a float. I've only got two. Gonna get him out. Gonna get him out. Gonna get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yeah, I've got him out. Got him out. Small fish, guys, but they all count. And listen, the object of the exercise is it could have been a fish that other people weren't catching. You don't know. He's in. How about, this is the ultimate shot, guys. It should get me a, C fr a free sunflare chair. Sunflare chair, you wouldn't want to say that after too many beers. What a picture. I could put
put him on there, I can put him in the seat. What a chair. I reckon that's a good luck fishing chair for me now. Let's get this one back. Well, I found out what those little nibbling bites are. And they are indeed skimmers well up in the water. That's bizarre. And I'm not feeding maggots or anything. Skimmer. I just went for a tiny piece. I mean, if you're getting bites and missing them, obviously don't put your hook size up and your bait size up. Start dropping it like I am small bits of bread. I'm going to try that once more just to satisfy myself. I haven't even fed out there. Just see, and I'm nailing the bite as soon as it goes. Holding the rod down to the right, striking to the right. I am out there. Trouble is trying to get a bite to camera, you end up eating up all the battery time. Wow, that's a decent fish. Oh, I missed him that. I'm going to leave it too long because the carp are moving. Three or four. There we go. There we go. See, smaller piece, smaller piece of bread plate. So I now know out there are skimmers on small bits of bread. A little bit bigger, a tad bigger there. Look. God, I'll tell you what, that chair is lucky for me. Right, fish at distance, guys, on the float. It's not a carp, for sure, but looks like a decent little bream. There he is, there he is, there he is, on the waggler, and you can see I'm at least, at least four feet deep there. Let's get him in, in he comes, take a look at him, put him on the bream mat. Man, that's going to take some washing. Nice little bream. And there's the bream deck chair in the background. You need one of those. I'll tell you what I'm going to get, guys. I'm going to get the word the director on the back of that. That's a nice bream, actually. Yeah, not but uh, I know people get giant ones. I'm not really bothered. It's a fish. It's a fish. It's good. I'm only here for the afternoon. Put him back. All is well. Now, you can see here, just looking out there. Let me just get a piece of small bread flake. I only want a small bit of them. I'm just checking out what these little dippy bites are, if they are all bream. There's my bait. Now you can see here, I've got bread up here. I've got bread down there, and they're not going crazy for it. So, that also tells me that slow sinking bread plate might be the way. Just going tumbling down through the water. They think it's a piece of this bread flake, maybe they're fish for hard, and as the bread flake soaks up, it crumbles down through the water like this really, really slowly. Looks natural. That's when they take it. They perhaps don't want to take it off the top. Who knows? Everything is a learning curve in fishing. I found another use of that table on that chair. Ideal for putting the camera on. Which is quite a nice bream. It's a decent one. Slow sinking flake again. Don't seem to want to know anything on the surface. Well, well, well. There we go, people. That's a nice bream, but I don't want that slime all over my nice chair. And there he is. That table is just perfect. I don't need tripods, stakes, bank sticks anymore. Let's get him back. Net, net, net. Now the fish on, guys. What I've done, I'll show you in a second, is I've... Uh, Slopped up some bread so it's sinking, some bread flake, mushed it all up, put it in a bucket so it's sinking and that gives me a target to aim for because I think they're taking bits of flake that's going down off the crust that the carp aren't taking. It's another nice bream. Man, you could get yourself a good bag of fish here. There he comes. There he comes. Well, well, well. Same size as the other one. On bread, couldn't ask any simpler than that, could you guys look? Nice bream. And what I've done, let me just get myself unslimed and I'll show you. I basically got some sliced bread, just mushed it up like that, squeezed the water out of it, makes a little sort of ground baity stuff and it sinks quite fast. And then I'll just throw it out and follow it up straight away with a float. I'll show you what I'm doing. 
something like that that's almost two bits there can you see that pinch it you've got to flick it on the top of your fingers that's one and that is sinking straight away I'm just to the left of that shadow line yuck that bread is slimy I have to say it's bizarre what we have to eat as humans if you got it wet you'd uh, see what it looks like this is the other thing you do you put the hook in the net yes we've always been there aren't we lots of times thank god for barbarous so that bread by now is about two three feet down i'm going to follow up with the float just in the general direction uh, see if that does go down i need to be a little bit right i'm pointing at the float there it's got a very slight, uh, slight toe to the right And every now and then I just tighten up like this till I barely move the float there. So I know I'm close to it should I want to strike. Possibly you might be able to see the dot of the float out there. The boat I threw in is over that direction. So I'm hoping I'll drift into it there. I see the ripples from a fish. I'm going to recast guys. One more small piece. One small piece of man, uh, bread for mankind. There's a carp moving out there now. I tell by the hump in the water, there's a little hump. Oh, I've gone too far left. Okay. I'm going to have to mash up some more bread here, guys, because I can see that it is actually working, sinking. I'm going to switch off. Or shall I wait? There we go, on camera. I was just about to switch off for you, thinking I'd never get one on camera. And indeed, I have. You see the crust <clears throat> around here is not getting taken at all. This is what one carp and four bream and a couple of little skimmers. All good action. Want to get a bit further out there and there. Get them working for it. Get them competitive. Also acts as a baiting trail. I'll tell you what I have noticed. Now this is this is interesting. I've always tell you, probably said you said to you before, take the crust off the bread because you want to use a flake, break it up and catapult it out, although they're not taking it, it's still bits crumbling off it. But these little light matchman's catapults with the long latex rubber are, are way, way more accurate for you can do a long stretch and still have fairly reduced power. This is the one for fishing close in with with bait. So the different catapults that matchmen use, they do actually have a use and can work. It wouldn't be on my seat otherwise. A bit more ground bait and I feel I can't move in. Make sure you keep your hook point clear. That's the main thing with fishing with flake. Don't mould it over to the point. That's on the money. That is the cast. Get the net out of the way. Now that's sinking, sinking, sinking. Any time in the next 10 seconds, there's the first bump. Just move the float slightly like this. Carp underneath it. Oh, I nearly. Small carp moving on. Oh, I missed him. That's your fault, Smith. Well, I'm going to move on around. I'm going to strike him faster and faster. I'm missing them. Probably maggots would do me good, but I've had, wait for this. 10, 11 bream, 11 bream there. And I strike so fast, it's unbelievable. Years ago, they used to call me the outlaw, Josie Pullen, Mr. Chain Blue Lightning himself. They'd say, we got me here, Mr. Chain Blue Lightning. Put in the comments, anybody who knows which film that comes from and who the star is. But I can't strike any faster than I've been striking. I'm missing them, but I'm hearing a carp slurp over here. So, really good on the bream. But Mr. Chain Blue Lightning is moving off. So you can find something he can strike and hook into. There's something cooking around this corner. There's a ton of fry on the surface just here. I figured that the slurping noise I heard was around this bush somewhere. A lot of scum on the surface here, guys. Could be carp under there. I'm not seeing anything, even with polarizing glasses, I'm not actually seeing the fish, which is what I like seeing. 
Uh, even the bread not being tucked by that, taken by that uh, that coot. For those who want to know, that bird there is a coot. Hmm. I think, people, I might move to the other lake. Loads of anglers. It shows you that that distance fishing with a bit of flake does work. I just feel that there's not quite enough movement here. It's gone quiet. I might as well move while it's quiet. It is now coming up quarter past four and I might find and get some carp taking on the drop. You guys better come with me. Help me carry that chair. Oh, it's a beauty. Guys, Mr. Chain Blue Lightning is on. <laughs> I just have one cast over here. And the bait actually laid on a piece of weed perfectly so the fish couldn't see the float. I'm guessing it's a decent carp. So it's going really well. Let's see it, let's see it, let's see it. Let's see it. Oh no, nice one. No, he's a nice one. Oh no. Oh, he pinged off. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? <laughs> well, I've come down to the uh, other lake. Carp right in front of me here. Actually, it looks like a grass cart, that one. Got loads of bread I put over the top. I'm trying to get the feeding out in the middle rather than tight into the margins. But you've got to be able to catch them where you can catch them. But I hope you don't get them going on slow sink flake. If I can see one that's cruising along, drop the flake in front of him and then watch the line tweet. But I'll try it with the float first. Going around trying to bang his head on that uh, corrugated tin. Ah, now I've got him. Now I'm onto him. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Slow sinking flight is working on the other lake as well, guys. Lots of anglers here, lots of gone actually. Here we come. Oh, there's some towel wall then. Yeah. That's more like it. Here we go, people. Don't neglect red flake. And the most common carp, just as the sun's going down. Shiny underneath. Look at that, it's like a great big six pound chub. Obviously, we'd sooner have a six pound chub. But, good little session in the afternoon. Try that slow sink of breath flake. I'm going to keep going. I am going to keep going. Come on, fish. Might try one a bit. Oh, I missed that one. Just make sure when you fold the bread a couple of three times, I put the hook through it. Bring it out and just barely, barely pinch that little piece on the eye of the hook. Leave the rest clear. I'm going to try this a bit deeper. Here we go. Right out in the bay. Look like a different fish, guys. Hit it deeper, probably a bream. Another skimmer, I guess. There it is indeed. Oh, shouldn't be lifting that one. So they are on the flake down deep as well. There he goes. Try keeping the same shadow line I'm casting through over there. And it sinks slowly, 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 naturally. But my goodness, you've got to strike quick. Like that, wasn't even fast enough. Almost as soon as I'm way out there. 
put some bread down here, nothing's coming up on that. Yeah, that one might try free liney. And there's fish all over out there, a little bit deeper. Oh, I bumped him. See how I put the rod on this table, guys. Put a couple of small rod rests there. And that could be the ultimate fishing chair. Put my drink down there. Get them while you can. Just got small bread, just trying to see what these fish are. Way over the back of the edge of the shadow line. Midway in this little, uh, little bay here. Oh, I missed that one. I missed that one. They've got to be small fish, haven't they? What can they be? The next thing I'm going to do is try <coughs> slopping up some of that bread. See if that brings them off the bottom, because I'm not hitting these fish at all. Oh God, what did I need, a telegram? <coughs> what I've done is chuck a load of bread out there in a tight bunch, and then I'll cast it to put my float through that, if I can. A little bit to the side. Got him this time, boys. Now I got him. Let's see what these fish are. I thought so. Bream. More bream. That's 12, it's about 14 bream I've had. <clears throat> My goodness. There's a lot of fish in there. saves a lot of trouble. Well guys I had another uh, <clears throat> four or five skimmers, two or three breams, I want about 15 bream, just the one carp, so I'm now looking for the carp. They're coming up on the surface more in this lake. Got a load of bread right in front of me, right in the margins, I'll show you how close they are. Just there, that was a little carp. Some of them aren't very big, you know, they're three pound or something like that, but they're good sport. I'll see if I can get one just to close out without the float. I'll try one free line and I might try one with a float, but it's very close for the float and down here. I think it might be a bit spooky. The idea of the float was to get them way out there, which it did. Ah, see if we get lucky. Well, I've been looking, but I haven't seen any cruising on the top. You see them waking like that over there, what we call waking, swirling, but I haven't physically seen the fish, which always makes it a little bit tougher for spotting them. There's one down there, just come up. I've got to put a bread all along the line here. Yeah, there's two, because I've moved away from the chair. They come in close now. I'll figure that in first. Decent fish that one. I put him back there. He's obviously moved. I feel sure if I leave that there long enough, he's going to come back. Quite fancy under those willows, actually. Oh, that's a nice fish, too. Now I've moved it from here to there, purely on the size of the fish, it's an isolated piece of bread. But it's a reasonable size fish, that one. I've got a feeling they're going up and down this edge here. Got him. Got him, boys. Got him on. Oh, 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 sweet. Sweet or what? Sweet or what? There's still other fish feeding up here. Oh, I 
I'll sit down when I play this one. I've got a feeling up along there on one of those trees. I'm going to put a load of bait and move up there a bit because I think there might be bigger fish in there. Just that time of the evening when they do come up. Oh, just as you pick the net up. Just as you pick the net up. Come on. He's in. There we go. That's why you keep him quiet. Tonic immobility. There's an Australian carp for you, look. How many people have caught these, you know? It's a Brisbane special. Right, guys, might have the close out fish here. Just had to walk along the uh, front of the edge, just waiting, trying to pick off a halfway decent one. There's loads and loads of carp coming up now. But he's trying to find one that's bigger than sort of three or four pounds. And I believe this one is. I do like my new chair tripod. Delightful. Come on, fish. Hopefully, he's got a good hook hold. You're never going to know even when you lose a fish. Nobody likes it, but. Oh, yeah, it's quite a decent one. Not as big as I first thought, but listen. But eight carp and 12 or 14 bream, small stuff. In an afternoon, it's not bad fishing, is it? Or two loaves of bread for a pound. They just tend to go completely bonkers. There he is, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. A few little tips in there, slow sinking bread flakes. Been doing it for me big time today. Do you know what? I caught more than I thought I would catch, gotta be honest here at Val Farm. Let's get this guy back. Oh, you forgot to tell you, don't forget to get your free download copy of the Awesome Angler, free download magazine. We'll see you again.